The Apollo GX series receivers may be used to navigate the two kinds of GPS non-precision approaches currently available. The GPS-only approach, which relies entirely on GPS navigation, and the GPS overlay to an existing non-precision approach. The overlay approach uses GPS positioning in place of the method originally specified. If the overlay approach shows GPS in bold letters, the underlying nav aid is not required. However, if GPS is shown in parentheses, the underlying nav equipment is required to be installed and functional, though the pilot need not monitor anything but the GPS receiver. Let's see how this works in a real approach. At about 30 nautical miles out from the destination, the receiver asks if you want to enable the approach. If yes, press enter. If you do not enable the approach at this point, the enable approach message will be repeated just before the final approach fix. When you select enter, the instrument asks for the local altimeter setting. Use the large and small knobs, enter the setting, and return to the nav mode. You are now in the approach transition phase. The approach annunciator light comes on steady, and the CDI switches from five mile sensitivity to one mile on each side of your track. Just before you reach the initial approach fix, a message will announce a waypoint arrival alert. Acknowledge the message and you will see the desired track to the next approach waypoint. 30 nautical miles out from the destination is also a good place to consider selecting auto zoom in the map scale window. Once you select auto, the map will continuously readjust its scale to ensure that both your present position and your destination are visible at all times. Shortly before you reach the final approach fix, and if you are not on hold, the active light will indicate that you are about to transition to the approach active phase. By the time you reach the final approach fix, CDI sensitivity will be fixed at three-tenths of a mile on each side of your track. The receiver will verify that it is working properly and when it is satisfied that everything is in order, the active light will remain steady on. If the active light does not come on steady, do not continue the approach. As you pass the final approach fix, the missed approach point now becomes the active waypoint. Sequencing is automatically suspended and the OBS hold enunciator is on. Any time in the approach active phase that you wish to cancel the approach, simply press the OBS hold key. This will return you to approach transition. The approach active light will go out, the CDI will scale back to one nautical mile sensitivity, and the active waypoint becomes the missed approach hold point. Then fly to the missed approach point or hold as instructed. Once you have canceled the active approach, it can only be activated again by crossing the final approach fix inbound. All right, you've flown the approach and you are nearing the missed approach point. Now you must choose to land or fly the published missed approach procedure. The normal waypoint alert message tells you that you've reached the missed approach point, which you acknowledge and return to nav or map. We will fly the missed approach procedure, so pressing the OBS hold enunciator cancels the approach and takes the system off hold. The Apollo GX receiver will sequence to the next waypoint. Now fly the procedure. Throughout instrument approaches, the IFR pilot has a constant need to time various approach segments. From the nav page, turn the large knob three clicks left to reach the countdown timer. Select the timer to change countdown value, then enter to begin counting. Once the timer reaches zero, a message will alert the pilot that the countdown timer has expired. Selecting the timer again will automatically insert the last value used, and enter will again start the timer counting. For the experienced IFR pilot, the Apollo GX navigation receiver provides in-depth information for every non-precision approach in the database. As you become familiar with the more common Apollo operations, we suggest that you return to your user's manual periodically to learn the more advanced features available to you and incorporate them into your IFR toolkit.
Now that you've seen the Apollo GX receiver in generic IFR in route and approach operations, let's fly some actual GPS approaches to give you an idea of what they look like using the GX receivers from tomorrow and to show you some of the many advanced GX features available to you. We'll start with a basic GPS approach to Nampa, Idaho. We are flying more than 30 nautical miles from Nampa, so we'll load the approach. Press select, then enter to list the approaches. Scroll through the approaches with the small knob. We'll choose GPS 11 with Emmet as the initial approach fix, then enter. At 30 nautical miles from the airport, a message asks you to enable the approach. Enter. The approach annunciator is now on steady. Now use the small knob to enter the local altimeter setting. Now returning to the moving map display, you will see that the destination is intersection Emmet. Fly to Emmet and turn toward Parmo. Shortly before Parmo, an arrival alert prepares you for your next turn. How far before reaching Parmo this happens depends on your ground speed. Once you reach Parmo, you'll be instructed to turn toward Defki, the final approach fix. Just before DEFKI, the Approach Active Annunciator begins to flash, signaling the transition to the Approach Active phase. The CDI now begins to scale down to 0.3 mile sensitivity. The OBS Hold and Approach Active Annunciator lights are on steady as you pass DEFKI, the final approach fix. If the approach light is not on steady, abort the approach. Before reaching runway 11, an arrival message signals you to prepare to land or execute a missed approach. As this is just practice, we'll cancel the approach active operation by pressing OBS hold. Now you have returned to the approach transition phase. Sequencing has resumed, CDI sensitivity is back to one nautical mile, and NEMU now becomes the missed approach holding point. At this point, it may be useful to refer to the manual, review this approach again, and explore the published missed approach procedures. Now let's try one a little harder, the VOR GPS Alpha approach to Medford, Oregon. This approach uses a procedure turn, a combined initial and final approach fix, and a missed approach hold at the final approach fix. The flight plan from Klamath Falls VOR to Medford is active. Now select will ask you if you want to load an approach. Enter brings up the list of approaches, and we select VOR Alpha, then enter to return to the previous page. Now that you've selected your approach, you see that the destination has changed from Medford Airport to Rogue Valley VOR. Since we're already within 30 miles of Medford, a message flashes asking us to enable the approach. Enter to enable, then dial in the local altimeter setting. Enter again, which returns you to the moving map display. In this case, OED is both the initial and final approach fix, so the Apollo GX receiver automatically suspends sequencing before you cross OED in preparation for the procedure turn. As you cross OED, set the OBS for the inbound course, 162 degrees, then fly the outbound course on the 342 degree radial set up for the procedure turn about two to three nautical miles outbound 
to give the Apollo GX receiver time to transition to approach active phase. The waypoint stays the same at OED. Now fly the procedure turn. As you intercept the 162 degree radial, the GX receiver will automatically resume flight plan sequencing and a course intercept message tells you that you're about to intercept the inbound course, your next heading. OED now becomes the final approach fix. Just before you reach OED, the approach active enunciator signals a CDI sensitivity change. As you cross the final approach fix at OED, the approach active enunciator lights solid, indicating that you may continue the approach to the missed approach point. The OBS hold goes on hold again, and you are prompted to turn to your final course to Medford. At the missed approach point, if you choose not to land, follow the missed approach clearance. Your Apollo GX receiver will continue to provide guidance on the final approach course until you press the OBS hold button to release the hold and allow waypoint sequencing to fly the missed approach procedure. Once again, it may be useful to stop here, refer to the manual, and review this approach again, as you may prefer to deal with procedure turns and other factors in a different way from what we've shown you here. When you are ready, return to the tape and we'll attempt an NDB approach with an unusual missed approach procedure. Next, let's try the NDB approach to Boise, Idaho. There are four NDB approaches into runway 10 right here, and we have chosen the one with the initial approach fix at Parmo. A message alerts us to enable the approach by pressing enter. Then, if necessary, enter the local altimeter setting. The flight plan and NDB approach are loaded. If we're using the moving map display, we'll also want to remember to light up the NDB soft key so we can see the NDB location and call sign. You will see a key on the right which shows 1. This means page 1. Press the soft key and page 2 will appear. As you approach bow, the final approach fix, the approach active light will flash. At bow, of course, the light should come on steady or the approach must be aborted. Past bow, you are in the approach active mode and you will fly the approach to the minimum descent altitude at runway 10 right. When the decision has been made to execute the published missed approach, press OBS hold to release the hold. The active waypoint now becomes bow as the missed approach hold point, and the nav function will shift from approach active to approach transition. The missed approach procedure directs you to fly outbound on the 105 degree bearing from bow within six nautical miles of the missed approach point. So, at the missed approach point, press direct to twice and select 105 degrees as the desired outbound course from bow. The CDI will indicate from and provide guidance on the 105 degree outbound bearing according to the missed approach instructions. When you reach 3,900 feet, Execute a climbing right turn to 4,200 feet and fly direct to bow. Push direct to. Bow comes up with a two indication, then enter. Your GX receiver will now provide course data direct to bow. If you would like to pause again to review this approach in the manual, we'll join you when you return to illustrate the help that ARC Assist can provide during a DME ARC approach. Finally, we'll illustrate a VOR DME non-precision approach using ARC Assist. The Apollo GX series receivers automate your DME ARC procedure. Let's see how this works in a real approach. We've activated the flight plan from Klamath Falls to Medford, Oregon, and have loaded the VOR DME 14 approach with lengths as the initial approach fix. This time, however, when we reach the initial approach fix at lengths, an arrival alert message tells us that the next leg is a DME arc. Press enter to accept arc assist. 
The GX receiver automatically suspends sequencing and automatically displays the ARC reference point page. Double check that the reference point for the ARC is correct and that you will fly a left ARC as OED will be off the left side of the airplane. Enter and the GX receiver will calculate the desired track all the way around the ARC to the intercept of the inbound course. As you intercept the OBS course at D3330, sequencing resumes. The CDI will begin to swing in and may be used for guidance as you turn to 153 degrees toward OED as the final approach fix. For additional information about these and other approach examples or for more information about using the Apollo GX receiver for non-precision instrument approaches in general, please review your user's manual on a regular basis.